Hello everyone and welcome to my kitchen. This is Cassie's Kitchen Creation. The creation for today is going to be the quintessential pound cake. This is going to be epic. I have a five flavor, six flavor, 10 flavor, and a 15 flavor pound cake. And I'm working on a 20 flavor, right? Today what I'm going to bake is going to be a five flavor pound cake. I'll start you off simple, okay? So um, the flavors that you use could be any of the flavors that you like in a cake. Um, I have my choices. Um, again, I'm preparing this um, for my family. Therefore, I'm gonna use um, different flavors that each of us like, okay? So um, I'm gonna start with a five flavor pound cake. The ingredients um, will be, first and foremost, we're gonna use sugar. Um, we're gonna have three cups of white granulated sugar. And I'm not cooking just for me, I'm cooking for the masses, as we say, so I have to compromise. Um, they're not big on my organic products, but uh, I'm okay, I'll be fine. So I'm gonna put three cups of sugar in here. We make compromises and modifications all the time. So um, three cups of sugar, just keep everybody happy. Two of the three cups of sugar, I'm going to add a cup of unsalted butter, which I have allowed to come to room temperature. I'll just transfer this in. Okay. So that's gonna be two sticks, because one stick of butter is a half a cup. So two sticks of butter will be one cup. Right. And again, that is unsalted butter, and you're allowed to come to room temperature. I'll just throw those away right quick. All right, the next thing I'm going to add is going to be a half a cup of shortening. I use Crisco All Vegetable Shortening, which I've already pre-measured. And I'm just gonna add this to my mixing bowl. I'll make sure I get the majority of this out. I do want my recipe to be correct. I like accuracy. As you know, that goes along with my background. Analytical skills, critical thinking skills accuracy and precision. I apply all those techniques um, in the kitchen. Okay. So now that I've added the one cup of unsalted butter, which I'll add to come to room temperature, three cups of white granulated sugar, and a half a cup of shortening. And again, I just use Crisco all vegetable shortening. If you want to use the Crisco blocks, that's fine as well. Uh, make sure that when you cut them, you make sure that this is an even distribution because sometimes those blocks are not um, measured properly. Uh, no offense to Crisco and their blocks. I use them from time to time as well, but just FYI, uh, make sure that the measurements are accurate. So now I'm going to uh, just basically cream the butter, the sugar, and the shortening. Um, I want it to be like light and fluffy. Okay, that's another reason why you allow your butter to come to room temperature so that it mixes well with your sugar and it gives you that light fluffy texture that you're going for. Okay, so I'm gonna first stir it as usual on the board. That's just giving it a, a very good mix, um, making sure that everything is mixing well together. Um, it's not gonna give me the fluffiness. I have to increase the speed for that. Um, but this is just making sure that everything gets mixed around, moved around and mixed in the bowl. And you get like an even distribution of the sugar uh, blending in with your butter and your shortening. So now I'm going to ramp the speed up to two on my blender. And I use a KitchenAid blender, but any blender will work. The new Bountiful, the handheld, they're not sponsored for any of this, but if you would like to use whatever blender you have, that is fine. I'm, I have a personal preference, and that's KitchenAid. So I'm going to adjust the speed. And while this is mixing, I will place you on a brief pause. As you can see, 
I have creamed the butter, the sugar, and the shortening, and it is very creamy and very fluffy. And now that I have creamed it, uh, my sugar, butter, and shortening is very, very fluffy as I showed you in the picture. Now I'm going to add the eggs. To this recipe, you need five large eggs. And these eggs need to be allowed to come to room temperature. And you also need to add them one at a time. And as you blend them, you make sure that you get a very good beating on them. Make sure that they mix very well in with your uh, creamed ingredients. So I'm going to add the eggs one by one and I have allowed them to come to room temperature. I always start the beater on one. That's to get a good stir, make sure that the, the yolk is broken and that the eggs um, mix well. I just gently ramp the speed up to two just to give it a very good beating. I don't want any egg streaks in my cake. I want to make sure that the yolk is broken before I add my next egg. And I also want to make sure that it's mixed well with my creamy ingredients. Okay. So next I will crack my second egg. And I will repeat this step until I have all five eggs incorporated into my creamed ingredients. here and I'm going to scrape down the sides of my mixing bowl because sometimes when you're blending you know that um, everything will settle to the sides or settle at the bottom so I'm going to just gently fold it in as I scrape down then I'll make sure that everything on my spatula ends up back in my bowl Once again, I'm going to make sure that I set the blender at about a speed of two and make sure that on this cake, everything gets mixed. When you add the shortening, you kind of have to uh, ramp the speed up just a little. All right, I'm going to put it on, I'm stirring just to mix that in. Move it up to two. Mixing bowls, uh, even if I have to beat my eggs, I use stainless steel 
Um, I use um, everything at room temperature, my eggs, my butter, I allow the milk. Um, I have everything pre-measured. There's a consistency where you use the same steps, uh, making sure that everything is incorporated together. Um, this cake is very important. This is the quintessential pound cake. This is one of the all-time favorites. You get a lot of requests for this cake. Okay. So everything seems to be mixed very, very well. Yeah, a lot of requests on this one. Usually, um, I have it for the holidays or just uh, special occasions, or I'll take it to a luncheon, and everyone's inquiring about it. Um, and I usually ask them what are their f favorite flavors before I bake it. I kind of take a poll of everyone that's going to be attending, and I usually try to use my chemistry and use density of those flavors to kind of um, create a masterpiece um, that everyone will like. And I then ask them to see if they can tell me what the flavors are. And in this cake, um, the way I mix it and the flavors I use, you can taste each individual flavor um, that's incorporated into the cake. Okay. So the next um, thing I'm going to do is add my dry ingredients. Now, I've already pre-measured everything and I have them here in the bowl mixed. Um, I have three cups of all-purpose flour and I use white lily flour. To this, I've added a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And I took my, and this is whisk. I took the, uh, not whisk, this is uh, sifted. I took the flour, I added my um, half a teaspoon of baking soda to it and then I sifted it. So this flour is sifted. Now, if you would like to use cake flour, you may use cake flour. I use all-purpose flour, and then I use my uh, baking soda, and at times, baking powder and a sprinkle of salt um, to, you know, make sure that I get the leavening process taking place. All right, so now, I'm going to start with flour, and I'm going to end with flour. I'm also going to add one cup of whole milk. I use organic milk. This is organic whole milk. You can use 2% milk. You can use buttermilk if you would like. You can use half and half. You can use heavy whipping cream. If you want to use goat milk, cow milk, sheep milk, whatever 1% milk, whatever milk you have available, that milk will work, okay? So to this, I'm going to start with uh, my flour, alternating flour and milk, flour and milk, and then I'm going to end with flour. I start with flour, I end with flour. That's a key step. So I will put in my first portion of flour. Again, I'm going to place it on a stir. And today I wore my apron. I'm not an apron wearer. Uh, because I have on a white shirt, of course, with the flour bath, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's white. Um, but um, I don't like stains. So I'm going to turn this blender on, one to stir. And that's just making sure that that flour gets mixed in uh, with my um, cream ingredients. Then, while it's on stir, I'm going to add a little milk. Add a little more milk. It's like half, almost half of the milk. Now I'm going to turn the speed up. I'm going to adjust it to two. And this is just making sure that everything's getting mixed well. While that's happening, I'm going to prepare my next cup of flour. Turn off my blender. I'll add my next cup of flour. Place the blender on stir. Adjust my speed just slightly to two to make sure that everything is mixing. I will add the remaining of my milk. And even with the milk, you want to make sure that you turn your blender on stir so that the milk doesn't pop around your bowl and pop out on everything. Once it seems like um, the milk is incorporated in just slightly, you can adjust your speed to two to get your good mix. Now I will add my last cup of flour. 
And there's always gonna be just a little flour left in the bowl. So I'm just gonna transfer this over. Again, I'll place my blender on stir. Adjust my speed to two. And as you can see, I'm reaching for the flavor because this is the last step. I'm going to add um, five flavors to this one. Again, you can add whatever flavors um, that are your favorites or that are favorites of your family and friends. So you'll add one teaspoon of each flavor that you're going to incorporate into your bake. Of course, I'm going to be using the infamous Watkins, and this is going to be my um, bacon vanilla. That's my first flavor. Okay. And I'm going to turn my blender on stir, and I'm going to allow it to mix. The next is going to be my organic uh, lemon. This is also Watkins. The third flavor that I'm going to add is going to be Watkins, and this is going to be my pure almond. Love the smell of almond. Almond and anise, wonderful smell. And also clove. So I've added three of my um, of my extracts already. And I'm gonna place you on a pause while these three mix and I'll grab my other two. Okay, my other two flavors are coconut and um, butter, and I've already mentioned out and add those to my um, mixing bowl. So I have a total of five flavors that I placed in this cake. So at this point I'm going to adjust my speed um, to two. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to take my spatula and I'm going to just scrape down the sides of my bowl, making sure that all the flour that clings to the side gets incorporated into the uh, batter. I also scrape the bottom very well. I don't want anything to stick to the bottom so that when I transfer it into my baking pan, once you get to the bottom, sometimes you'll see how it's kind of um, clings on and it looks kind of clumpy. Um, I don't want that to happen. So I just mix it up very well. Fold it probably about five, six times from the, once I get my sides um, mixed in and then I scrape the bottom. I just fold it in a couple of times, making sure that everything gets a really good mix. Then I'm going to make sure that what's on my spatula ends up back in the bowl. This, as I said, this is the quintessential pound cake. This pound cake will have you coming back for more. This is an addiction, this pound cake, I must say. Um, it is very, 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 very good. Right. Very pleasant taste. All right, so now I'm going to wrap my speed up to four, and I'm going to allow my cake um, to mix very well. While this is mixing, I'm now going to move over to the oven, and I'm going to spray my baking pan. I am using Nordic Ware. This is a Nordic Ware. Um, this one is the pound cake and the angel food cake pan. 
Um, it's um, 18 cups or so 4.25 liters. And yes, I've used this pan before. I keep my pan very clean. I use the Pam Baking made with flour. This is for perfect release. Pam is not a sponsor of this video. However, I do use their products. No, it's Nordic wear, but I use their products as well. Um, this time I'm going to, this is still considered to be a bump pan, except it doesn't have the waves. This one is a smooth pan, um, which is going to be um, a very nice finish on my cake, as well as the crust. So here I'm going to spray my pan very well with the pan. And as I said, I like to spray it over the sink so I can easily clean it up. Make sure you spray your pan down very well. And put in the smooth. You don't want the cake to stick to the glue. have well coated the pan. Right? Now I'm going to add sugar, which is a key ingredient and a secret ingredient of mine, but I'll share it with you. to assist in this falling back into the mixing bowl but if you just let it sit it'll drop it's mixed very well everything off of the blender the beater that's on the blender all right so now I will release my mixing bowl from my blender I'm gonna push this back just slightly and now I'm going to transfer my batter from the mixing bowl to the baking pan so again, I scraped down my sides. I just released it from the side walls of the mixing bowl. And I do the same thing with this pan. When I'm transferring it in, I pour it, and I pour it so that it kind of layers around the pan, kind of folds on top of each other. And that kind of helps to get a very good mix, like a consistent mix of the batter. And when it seems like it just doesn't want to pour anymore, which, you know, you're getting to the end, I just scrape it down to the sides and let it flow in the pan. Okay. Okay. So what's left, I'm, I kind of, you know, release it from the sides of my mixing bowl. We're going to get everything. We want all of it. Alrighty, so now we have everything in our mixing bowl transferred over to the baking pan. Now what I'm going to do is I will kind of shake the pan like left to right. And that's making sure that the batter in the pan is evenly distributed to the space that's in the pan. We know that whenever you have a solid, it takes the shape of whatever um, container that it's in, just like liquids, okay? So I just shake it, shake and bake. So I just shake it 
And then I'm going to tap it, and I do have a cover here. I'm gonna tap it 10 times to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles trapped in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, I don't wanna tap on my, I'll shake it a couple more times. Then I'm gonna tap it 10 times again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You'll see when you're tapping it, the little bubbles will start uh, to come up to the top of the cake. They'll come to the surface. I was trying to beat it on the, on the cover so that you wouldn't really hear all the noise, um, but it's, that didn't give it a, a good enough beat. All right, so now I'm ready to transfer the cake in the cake pan to the oven. I've already preset, preset my oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm going to bake the cake for one hour and 20 minutes. I'm gonna transfer it to the oven. When I place the cake in the oven, I'm also going to kind of move it around side to side to make sure that the pan sits flush in the oven. If you're a baker, you know exactly what I mean when I say that I'm going to place it in the oven because you uh, have your oven racks and you move the cake pan to make sure that it sits flush, especially the other bunk pan. This one usually I don't have too many problems out of, but when you have the bunk and it have the curves under it or the ways, um, you have to move it to where the corners kind of sit properly within um, the rack of your oven. Okay, so the cake is in the oven, it is baking. Um, it's gonna take a one hour and 20 minutes. So I'm gonna place you on a brief pause. I'm going to Clean up, wash dishes, because I know you guys aren't going to help me. Uh, you'll help me in the end eat it, but as far as cleaning up, that's always the cook. Uh, yeah, the cook's job, okay? So I'm going to clean up everything and get everything organized and placed back in its proper place, and I will be right back with you. One hour and 20 minutes. Okay, everyone. The cake is ready. Beautiful. I've removed it from the oven. I'm going to place it on the rack and allow it to cool in the pan for 10 minutes. Okay. While the cake is cooling, I'm going to go ahead and prepare the icing because I do put a glaze on the cake. Um, and what that glaze consists of is a half a cup of powdered sugar sifted. Okay, so you want a half a cup of powdered sugar. Okay. And instead of using a regular sifter, I'm just gonna use this. Um, I find that this does a really good job and it's very consistent. So you just sift it into the bowl. Again, I'm using a stainless steel bowl. And there's a science why I'm using these stainless steel bowls. Okay, so I've sifted it. Now that I've sifted the powdered sugar, I need to add a half a teaspoon of the extracts that I used in the cake. So that's gonna be a half a teaspoon of the vanilla A half a teaspoon of the almond, a half a teaspoon of the lemon, a half a teaspoon of the butter.
and a half a teaspoon of the coconut. And to this, I'm going to also add a half a teaspoon of milk. And whatever milk you put in the cake, that's the same milk you use. If you use whole milk, this is going to be um, vitamin D. This is organic whole milk. Or if you use um, goat's milk, sheep milk, um, cow milk, whatever milk you use, half and half, whipping cream, Heavy whipping cream, 2% milk, that's the milk. Alright, so I've added a teaspoon of milk. I'm going to take a spoon and I'm just going to mix this up very well. Now, if this isn't mixed to your consistency, if you like for your icing to be a little bit runnier, like thin, then you can add a little more milk. Um, but add it a teaspoon at a time. If it seems like it's too thick, you can add a little more milk. If it's too thin, you can add a little more sugar. I think this is a little bit thicker than what I usually would want it. So to this one, I'm going to add just a little bit more milk. And I allow the cake to cool. And then I'm going to put this glaze on there while it's like um, not really hot but warm. Okay, that's perfect. And I just drizzle it on. I don't put a whole lot of glaze on the cake, just drizzle it on. Um, it's just an addition. Some people like it, um, like glaze on their cake, some people don't. Um, I do. So this is the consistency that I want. And I just um, let it drizzle on the cake. All right, so I have the, um, the glaze prepared and ready. I have the cake cooling. As soon as I turn the cake out onto the cake pan and I'm ready to put the glaze on, I'll pick you back up. Hello everyone, I'm back. The cake has been removed from the oven, allowed to cool for 10 minutes, and then I transferred it to uh, the cake plate and I allowed it to remain cooling. It just, it's um, cool enough to where now I can add my icing or my glaze that I prepared. And I, I'm just gonna lightly drizzle, not a whole lot. I'm just gonna lightly drizzle it on, nothing fancy. Again, this is a five flavored pound cake with five flavor glaze. This is the quintessential pound cake, I will say. You can play around with different flavors that you and your family and friends, coworkers, colleagues um, like, and you can create a masterpiece just as I have, or you can mimic the recipe that I have, or you can Google and find one. They use certain flavors if you're not good with um, blending different flavors. You can do that as well. Okay. So this cake is done, and um, I actually purchased some Bluebell, and Bluebell's not a um, sponsor of this video, but I like Bluebell ice cream. I purchased some Bluebell homemade vanilla ice cream. So this is what we're going to have for dessert after dinner tonight. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, if you like the recipes, or you like just listening to my wonderful voice, or you just admire um, the different variety of pound cakes, uh, please click the thumbs up button, which is the like button. Um, it doesn't really do anything other than edify um, the process of being able to allow your uh, YouTube videos to be able to be shared with uh, different viewers or a variety of viewers. Um, please share uh, the videos with your friends and family, colleagues, and coworkers. Um, encourage them to bake as well. You never know. They might be a baker in the bunch, and they may 
uh, bake something for you. Also, click the notification bell um, and subscribe to all so that as soon as I upload a video, you will receive it. Um, I want to take the time to say thank you for watching. Um, thank you for interacting. Uh, for those who share, thank you for sharing my videos. Um, it's not something that I um, usually, out of my norm to do a, a video of, of the things that I bake, but um, I've been asked by so many people to do a YouTube video and just share uh, all of the different things that I do, uh, all the creations that I have. So there's more to come. Um, these are just some of the faves that people um, request quite often. Uh, but I do have some others, and a lot of them are catering to like specific holidays, um, birthdays, um, uh, weddings, uh, you name it. Um, I can do it. And not just me. I have a talented family, so um, they all do the same. All right, so uh, if it's something I can't do, I can just get a recipe from them, recreate it, and it's mine. It's called Share and Share Alike. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, well, I'm going to let you go. Thanks again for watching. Um, I would, you know, share a slice of cake with you, but virtually I don't think that's possible. But um, you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I hope you have a great start to this wonderful new week. Bye, guys. Catch you on the next bake.